Haven't heard it in a while. Here we go. And here we go for another edition of Joelful in the Ring. And yes, my name is Frank Joelful, and you all know who this man is, George Mackay from Straight Talk Wrestling. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? I'm glad to be here. First time, but not the last. I mean, I've had a couple Joeful people on the show. <laughs> I haven't had you on the show yet. We got to change that. We got to get you on the straight talk side of stuff. But hey, man, it's we, an we, honor. We, all, we, all we got here in Canada is time, folks. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You're absolutely right. So, what, but man, so it's an honor going? to be on Joeful in the ring for sure. <laughs> we know here in Quebec, uh, it's bedlam here. Uh, what's going on in Ontario there, COVID wise? Well, um. So apparently restrictions are going to be semi-lifted on the 31st of January. And yeah. the exciting news is that a lot of people are excited about is that we can now eat and drink in movie theaters again. So that's the okay. that's the big excitement over here is that we can now eat and drink. So you don't have to sm- – actually, I guess you're still smuggling stuff in because the prices in the movie theaters are ridiculous. So <laughs> I just I just tend to bring my own candy in anyways yeah. and my own soda. <laughs> Fuck it. Like whatever. Y- YOLO. YOLO live once. I'm not going to pay that's 19 bucks. That's it. Pay I can get for a dollar. So no way. <laughs> <laughs> but me, I, I honestly, like, I, I, I've, been, I've been seeing. Uh, obviously, I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of your channel on YouTube and obviously on social media. And I love to see that when, when you're at those wrestling events, and you got, you, you got to see probably one of the matches that I'm probably most jealous to, that, that I, you got to see is that PCO versus Josh Alexander match, that hardcore match. And where, where's that, where's that table? Where's that piece of table? It's, right, it's on the wall here. Let me, uh, let me flip it. See, there it is right there. You oh, see man, there. that's amazing, man. That's amazing. You know what? Every time, now, every time I go to an IWI show, I'm going to ask for a, a little piece of history there every time I go. But how, how is it? I've like, never uh, done that before. I've never done that before, but I just, okay. for some reason, I was like, Fuck it. They're going to lock things down again. Yeah. It's almost Christmas. Smart move. Because the kids get spoiled. I, I get spoiled too, but in different ways. I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to, I snatched the biggest piece I could find. And I went over to both of them. Like, can you guys sign this? And PCO, like I've had PCO on the show, but to actually meet him in person for the first time, that was pretty special. And to see him okay. and see like 52 years old. And the, the dude could still go like he's 20. Like, <laughs> He's pulling moon salt and he, there, there's nobody built off the like top that rope to the outside. Like and it's like you don't even see 20, 30 year olds doing that now. The guy's 52 and he's he's showing everybody up. No. I love to see it. But that's uh that that federation that I saw them fight was is Destiny Wrestling, right? If I'm not mistaken. Destiny World and Wrestling, yes. I'm proud to be Destiny affiliated with those guys. Yes. Yes. What's the uh, relationship you have uh, there with, with them? Uh, good friends of yours. I know that uh, you 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 know a lot of guys in, in that federation as well. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much. Dusty was the first kind of one to to give uh, Straight Talk Wrestling in the early days an opportunity to um, tap into their roster, get an opportunity to. Uh, we started off with well, actually, I started off with harassing uh, George the Iceman, who's the president of Dusty Wrestling, for yeah. like six months on Facebook. I'm like, I'd love to get you on the show. If we could find a way to get you on the show, it'd be great. He finally got back to me, and he's like, Okay, I could see your persistence. I'm like, You have no idea what persistence is yet. You haven't even met me. But uh, we ended up doing it. We ended up doing the interview and it was really good. And he ended up giving us a couple first time around. He gave us a couple tickets because we hadn't had a chance to go out to a show yet. We hadn't even experienced indie wrestling at that point. Okay. And we went there and the first one of the first matches we saw was uh, Ada Prince, Channing Decker, uh, a couple other guys whose name are escaping me now. Was it a fatal four way? And they lit it up. And then we got to see Josh Alexander, low key and Aiden Prince, who won that fatal four way, jump into a triple threat for the Destiny Championship, which had been recently vacated by Pete Dunne due to injury and also WWE obligations at the time. And okay. Josh just lit it up, and, like, we went up to him. We introduced ourselves, me and my former co-host, and we're like, and we'd love to get you on the show. And he's like, yeah, let's do it at the next Destiny event. So we went. George, you know, George is George. When it's business day, George is very focused. The Iceman, he's very focused okay. on where he's got to get <laughs> And he, uh, he was like, you know what, man, I can give you 20 – 25 minutes 30 if i'm in a really good mood but sure enough 26 minutes in he's like josh you gotta go it's it's time to get up and get ready so (laughs) we got a 26 minute interview that was ridiculously horrible audio because the crowd was so ruckus at that next show like and that was pete dunn coming back my former co-host played pete dunn and josh alexander in on the drums and it was just a special night for everybody and then having having george kind of 
uh, in that building that relationship with George gave us the clout to go after certain people, go go after certain people for interviews. And and it's saying, listen, if you need references, you know, ask Iceman. He knows us. He knows what we're about. We carry ourselves with the utmost professionalism. And that's what really opened the doors to some of our early interviews. Like if you go back through the archives, now it's a long time. We're talking like four years ago. Yeah. If you go back through the archives, you you see that Iceman was like the first interview we did. Then we got Alexia. We got Holden. Uh, you know, we got um, Lionel Knight first time around. He's been on the show twice since. Aiden's been on the show twice. And Josh has been on the show three times now. So it's been it's been a real great experience. And Destiny Wrestling is one of the one of the companies that I, I live and breathe for. Like whenever the shows get announced, I always e-transfer George right away. I'm like, save me three front row tickets because fuck sitting on the bleachers. I want to be there where the action yeah. is. I want to see yeah. it all. And uh, Destiny always brings the best talent and puts on the best show when it comes to Ontario, they're, they're definitely top tier. They're definitely top, top one in Ontario promotion wise, not taking anything away from all the promotions, just the affiliations they've had, Frank, that they've brought in is phenomenal. Some of the talent I've been able to see in that venue. It's incredible. It's incredible. I can imagine because what, what I see on social media makes, makes me salivate to come take a drive down there. But what, what I would love to see is, you know what, since we're talking about, well, everyone talks about the Forbidden Door in AEW and WWE, I'd love to see a Forbidden Door open with IWS and Destiny. I'd love to see it. Two great independent uh, wrestling organizations here in Canada going at it. You know, it, it doesn't matter who wins or loses. I think everybody would win in a situation like that. Well, the fans would win. The fans oh. would win because, but the fans would be divided. Like you got the yeah. IWS faithful and you got the Destiny faithful. So they'd well, be you know very what? divided. And in that case, in that case, then you would have, let's say, a, an event in Ontario based out of Ontario for the Ontario fans. And then come on down to Montreal and then, you know what I mean? And, and give, and give the same, the same kind of show to us in Montreal. And I think that, like, I think that would be amazing to see. I think a lot of more collaborations within independent organization, let alone AEW and WWE and Impact. Everybody wants to see it. But what I would love to see, because I'm a big fan of independent wrestling, and I'm pretty sure you are as well, I'd love to see someone like maybe Jeremy Prophet come wrestle in Des Destiny or maybe a, a Green Phantom or maybe, I mean, well, I'm, you've seen Speedball Mike Bailey fight as well there too as well, right? Yeah, like three times. And every time you see the guy, he's just ridiculous. But yeah, I, I would love to see Jeremy Prophet come over. I mean, I'd love to meet I'd love to meet uh, the the slickest MC in all of uh wrestling, period. <laughs> like I've said this so many times about Jeremy. That dude could steal your car, steal your girl, steal your clothes, and you somehow walk away with a smile on your face. Like there, Take when, more, Jeremy please. Prophet, <laughs> when Jeremy Prophet lights you up, it's like next level. Like when me, him, and Kyle. We did promo yeah. 101 and there was nobody yeah. better to have on the show. And I said to Jeremy, I said, you know, I'm going to go at you. I'm going to go at you because I was hoping he was going to come back at me. But I guess he didn't want to hurt my feelings because it was my show. So he went at Kyle. And I just <laughs> yeah. remember. And I almost think he timed it because I was – when he was cutting his promo, I needed to take a drink. So I just had my glass up. And he just seemed to look over at me at the corner of his eye. And then he's like, Kyle, you look like a hermaphrodite Mr. Potato Head. And I, just, I spit water everywhere everywhere and I, now whenever i see kyle i can't unsee the no, you can't. i can't see it it's, it's, poor it's kyle but... It, but yeah poor kyle I mean, the guy takes a lot of shit he thinks but a lot is... you know what he, th he thinks a lot from from jeremy but it's all it's all in good fun <laughs> uh um speak, speaking about co-host the mini host seems like she's doing very well how did that whole how did that whole mini host uh, come apart did she want to do it did you tell hey, you better do this or else or you know what i mean like how, how did it all come apart with the videos because we're all happy to see the collaborations like that especially within family oh thank, thank you very much yeah it was um the show was gaining a little bit of traction like i said i just lost my co-host and she when i once she saw me doing the youtube stuff she was like you know dad mind you this was she was seven turning eight she's like dad i really want to get into this i really want to do this i was like buddy youtube is YouTube is great, but there's also a lot of people opinions. There's a lot of people that can be yeah. hurtful. I, I've experienced it. There's a lot of people that wanna, are you don't somehow wanna, you not want to. You don't want to expose that to to your kid as well, right? So exactly right. And then she went, especially when she's just out there trying to have fun. But then I I was talking to the wife one night. I was like, what if we did like a little small segment with her from every wrestler that I interview, but we do it as like a different segment. So it's kind of like a segue leading in. She's like, well, what do you mean? Yeah. I'm like, what if we do like a five questions type thing? And then it was like. Yeah, I think Cass could do that. So we ended up going to a battle art show that night. And I told her who I was interviewing, which was Amy Crimson. And I said, why don't you write questions for her? And I think Bianca's going to be there. Maybe we can get Bianca. So she wrote the questions. 
And we sat there after the interview and I took my phone and I said, okay, you know, let's give it a shot. Push record. And she just lit it up. Like she did it way. And the whole thing with her, with the please like subscribe comment and all that <laughs> stuff. Every time we get, we drop a new video, you get notified. That was from her just watching all these YouTubers and she just lit it up. And like, yeah, it's one of those like proud dad moments when you can sit there and yeah. you can sit, you can see the, um, the stars being born, but she is sometimes very stubborn, much like her father. But when it comes down to taking direction or when I'm trying to give her things, like when she first started, she used to be very shy and timid, like not on the mic. She'd always speak in front of a camera, but yeah. she would speak softly. And I kept telling her, I'm like, dude, you have to uh, kind of raise your voice. You have to you have to kind of speak from your diagram. She'd be like, but I am. I'm trying. I'm like, I'm not getting mad at you. I'm just giving you constructive <laughs> criticism. You got to do this. It's, thing. Hard, like, it's hard to take me. that kind of constructive criticism from your dad too, right? So I'm sure, I'm sure there's, you know, like, 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 like even me and my dad, my dad was my soccer coach for, for my whole life. He would used to give me shit. So I was like, but fuck, your dad really hates you. I go, no, he's, he's showing me the ropes. You know what I mean? Like the, we, I think as us as Italians, we take it in a different way than other people because a lot of people, when they see Italians scream at each other, they think, my God, I, I what the hell is going on here? But like, no, no, it's just a regular conversation we're having here. And uh, we're let's talk you know? normally. Yeah, we're talking normally. Like that, that's how we speak. Like even when, yeah. I, when I go to my parents' house, my wife and my daughters could tell I get a little, I get a little riled up because I'm like building up the energy. So when I walk in my house, I'm, I walk in, I'll be like, Mom, I'm here. I'm like, what'd you say? I said, Mom, I'm home. I'm here. Oh, you're here. George, George, George Jr.'s here. Okay, I'm coming down. I'm going to just put my teeth in. And you know, like, uh, that's just how the house is. We get really like riled up, but um, my wife is very soft spoken. So I guess my daughter got that from her. But now, now, like when the mini host and I are talking, like about stuff and I'm sitting there, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta wait, you gotta pause, let them speak the question. She's like, I got it. I know what I'm doing. Like, I don't, I'm good. And she puts the hair behind the ears and she's bam, she pushes record. I don't even push record anymore. I used to push record. Now she's like, not any, don't worry about it. I got it. Yeah. Oh man. And I, and I obviously was very happy to see that, that you, you, uh, it was probably one of your big time dreams to announce, to be an announcer in, in a wrestling ring. Uh, how did that all come about? So I was, um, I, I got asked by HWE, who Hamilton Wrestling Entertainment, they're a great promotion. And I interviewed one of the owners when they took over Battle Arts. They became kind of co-owners of Battle Arts with Santino okay. Morella because he was moving out to Georgian Bay. Yes. And I went over there and I interviewed him. And AC and I hit it off. And Dave as well. They're both the, the head honchos over at HWE. And they both said to me, you know what, when shows get back up and running, because I interviewed them uh, December 19th, uh, December 2019, and then COVID struck and everything kind of just slowed right the fuck down. And um, we interviewed and he was like, you know, when shows get back up and running, we want to give you a shot at commentating. I was like, that's awesome, man. Whatever you guys need me for, I'm there. Like, I just want to wreck your company. I don't care. And then sure enough, we did the first show in July and I got a text message from AC. He's like, hey, uh, you're, you're good for commentary, right? I was like, oh, shit, you were for real? <laughs> you, you, I was like, oh, joking? man. I, 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 was, I was like, okay. I was like, dude, you know I don't know the moves and stuff. He's like, you don't need to know all the moves. He's like, you just got to be able to tell a good story. And I'm like, okay, yeah. He's like, I trust you. He's like, I know you're going to knock it out. So we did the first one, and it went well. And so far, um, I actually got uh, done three gigs with them so far. And then on the last one, they said to me, uh, can you can you go out there and hype up the crowd? So I was like, can I do Triple H? I'm like, can I please, can I please ask the crowd if they're ready? <laughs> I just like I've always wanted. I've always wanted. To, I don't know what it is. No, I don't know about kidding. you. But every, Any wrestling fan has wanted to grab that mic and do that shtick, and I'm glad you got to do it. Continue. Sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> I, that and spitting out water. Like, like whenever I take a drink from a water bottle, the first thing I do is look left and right, and then I look up and I'm like, wait, I'm at work. I can't spit it out. I gotta sw I gotta. I gotta. I gotta let it go down. I can't spit it out. But went out there and I, I was able to say, Are you ready? Oh, are you and I just like fuck. It was electric, and then to do the commentary and get involved with the wrestlers, and it, it's just it's been a dream come true. Like bucket list is checked off. And actually, I can announce and I can plug this now. So this is, I guess, a little bit of breaking news. But I just got yeah. asked for another upstart promotion out here to uh, to do the commentating, and they sent me my graphic, and I'll show it to you right there. And there's there's my graphic right there. There I am. Holy shit! Wow! Congrats, buddy. That's amazing. Yeah, so I'll be. I'll be affiliated with New Frontier Pro Wrestling. They'll be starting up in March. Uh, it's a uh, promotion out here. We'll be doing our first show in Toronto. So keep an eye out for that. I'll be sharing on my socials. And who knows? Maybe that's when we get Frank Jofo over to uh, the great province of Ontario. And maybe Frank comes down. Frank, I've told you before, if you come down, 
There's a spot on my couch for you, bro. My wife will cook you <laughs> pasta. It'll be perfect, dude. I'll, I think, I'll, take, I'll take the boat there. I'll take the boat there. I know. I know. You know what? The, we're we're in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, a lot. We're in. Uh, I know I, Windsor's a little far from you, though, right? Yeah, Windsor's Windsor's four hours. That's a I would do it. To, though, right? for you. Uh, Hamilton's only about ninety minutes. I, I could do okay. Hamilton for you. I'll drive you back. No problem. It's all good, man. Okay. All good. Because I, I, like I said, I've been, I've been salivating to come see like big events. Like I, I wanted to go to the states, but with all these restrictions and everything, I not to sound like paranoid or anything, but I'd rather be safe than sorry, you know. So I'm, I'm just waiting for the perfect time and to see what, what, what the future holds. But um, it sounds like everything's go going good for you with your channel. A any upcoming, uh, any upcoming events that are becoming for your channel? Any exciting things are going to be coming for your channel coming up in 2020? Yeah, I mean, uh, getting. Getting a lot of interviews. Like, I, I got to give you a credit and a shout out, though, too, because you guys threw me on to PJ Savage. And uh, when I hit oh, him up God. and I was like, hey, man, I'm good friends with Frank Jofo. Like, if you guys, if you don't mind, he's like, dude, I, he's like, I, I follow your channel. He's like, I know you. I know what you're about. Let's do it. He's like, but, but everybody asks now. They don't, they don't really care about me so much. Am I going to do, he's like, am I going to do five questions with the mini host? Yeah. You are. I'm like, yo. <laughs> You're gonna talk That's to amazing. me too. Amazing. Like, he's like, yeah, I know for sure. He's like, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you, but I, I will be sitting down with her, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know what? That's 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 great to hear because at, at least you know that you're, you're you're she's she's doing some good for the rest for the wrestling community, and I think we need that in this day and age. And I know that we we both grew up in the Attitude Era, where and I was just telling somebody before that I used to watch Monday Night Raw on Mondays, and this is the year two thousand, where I graduated in the year two thousand, and I was fifteen years old. And right at, right as soon as Monday Night Raw, the rule was you go to bed right away, no phones, no nothing. I said, okay, no problem. I could stay up up until that time, right? So then I would run to school and I would run to my 20, 30 friends that were all my wrestling friends. I was like, did you see what happened last night? Did you see what happened last night? Nowadays, we don't get that anymore. We don't get that anymore. Now it's you get a you get a a, a start to finish of what happens on, on, on Monday Night Raw on Twitter or the arguments and the trolls and everything. Do you think that like inter the internet has like watered down the product a little bit since when we used to watch it back in the day in the Attitude Era days. Oh, yeah. I, I've said this before. Uh, the internet has been great for certain things because it gives people yeah. like us, you and I, uh, Joe, everything great that Jofo does and ourselves here at Straight Talk Wrestling. It gives us a voice to throw yeah. our opinions and our booking ideas out there and just have some fun with it because at the end of the day, we're all fans. There's parts exactly. of the products we don't like. There's parts yeah. of the products we love that other people absolutely hate. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all just expression. It's all just remembering that we're all fans. But yeah, the internet spoils a lot. Like, I'll be honest, I uh, I work early, so I don't get a chance to watch much Raw, SmackDown, or even AEW. But I don't have to worry because I have those hashtags programmed into my socials. I can there just go, go there and, oh, oh, look at that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Dan House had appeared last night. I'll share yeah. that. Oh, exactly. cool. Hey, yeah. uh, oh, look at this. But I will say this, is that exposing uh, our daughter's because my wife and I are diehard fans. Exposing our daughters to wrestling early, like our five-year-old, she's obsessed. She puts me in arm bars. She chokes me out. She's crazy. She's going to be the next woman's champion. But even like the mini host, when the mini host was just getting into wrestling, and you would ask her, be like, who do you like? Oh, dad, I like Sasha Banks. I like Bailey. I like Becky Lynch. I like, you know, these people. And then she, her taste branched out. Now she's old school. Like she, she appreciates it's Trish Stratus and Lita because we showed her a little bit of the old and a little bit of the new. She's understanding so what's going on in wrestling. And exactly. it's just not, I like Hulk Hogan. I like Ultimate Warrior, you know, like the like it was back in the day, right? Because we had no choice, right? Now we have a little bit of a choice. Right. The only thing I ever forced her to like because I told her if she didn't like Sting, <laughs> she's out of the family. Okay. But she yeah. likes Sting, so we're okay. <laughs> uh, Triple H, she's kind of up and down with. She she kind of, she, she doesn't like the fact that um, his head is shaved now. She, okay. I, I know she didn't like him with the long hair. She's like, I don't like okay. the fact that his head is shaved. And I'm like, yeah, but it's still the game. Okay, he's the game. He's a cerebral assassin. Were you, were you a Triple H guy when he was with DX Always. or when he was before DX? Before DX. Terrorizing. Okay. I, I I started liking him when I saw him terrorizing WCW Saturday night. Okay. Wow. I saw him there for the first time. I'm like, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm going to like him. And then, sure enough, I was also a WWE fan, so I'm watching Raw one day. And out comes terrorizing, but he's like – got this frilly shirt on and he's cursing that, and i'm that like that song dun, 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 and come out like, like holding his ass like, i'm like who is the, I'm the like, aristocrat i guess the, yeah the, he was the blue blue call him. I was like, oh this is horrible but thankfully he took see there's there's true wrestling 101 right there yeah he took a shit gimmick and a shit idea and he made it into legendary status exactly he, he did he did everything 
that he was supposed to do. He played by the book, other than the curtain call, which he yeah. suffered over Shawn Michaels, which I don't think was right, but I get it. I get well, yeah, because he was supposed to, he was supposed to win that upcoming King of the Ring, right? Mm-hmm. He was supposed and to win Stone that Cold winning it because of that whole curtain call thing. So just to say, Triple H was maybe a millisecond away from you're out of here because of that situation, and he bit his lip. He took the hundred losses that he did probably in the next year or two. And I think they gave it to him the year after. I think they did. They, they gave him the King of the Ring after that, right? Or they a year did. or two yeah, later. Yeah, so. a year or two later they did. But I mean, remember, Frank, he did slot bucket matches with the Godwins. I mean, I know, fuck, I bro. Those were I know, horrible. But, but it just goes to show that sometimes maybe I don't, it's like everybody else in, in, in wrestling today. Everyone's like, it's like people complaining about Gunther of the name change. Who cares about the name? It's, 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 you know what I mean? There's, it's, he could be called uh, anything you want. He's still a great wrestler. So now that he has a bad name attached to him, it's what? Now he's he's not a good wrestler anymore. Like you don't want to watch him. You don't want to tune in. You don't want to be uh, behind his, his, his journey to maybe one day becoming the WWE champion, which we all would love to see. But now that he's Gunther, ah, okay, forget this guy. You know, uh, it's like, come on, man. I, I think I think the fans nowadays are, uh, I don't know, man. They're, they're not as tough as, as as they were like us back in the day, you know? Absolutely. And I'm a tough fan to an extent, but also there's some things that, that do bother me. Like, I'm not going to lie. The Nia Jax situation with the sign. Yeah. I did find that distasteful. I did. Okay. And I, 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 I commented on a post about it. I was like, you know, this is not right. And then I got, I started getting blasted by people. I started getting people insulting me like, uh, uh you're fat, you're bald. Oh my God. No, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that I was a bigger guy. Oh, thank you so much for letting me know. Yeah. Like you gotta be fucking kidding me. Like, you know, you don't know a thing about me, but you're going to sit there and make judgments because exactly. I said, I mean, no offense. The reason why that that insulted me was a because whatever Nia Jax, Nia Nia Jax. Oh my God! Oh, slap me across the face. Whatever Nia Rose's uh, life outside of wrestling is, that's her personal life. Those that's her journey. Yeah. That's her choices. But the fact that some fan actually paid upwards of at least a hundred dollars for front row tickets because I know that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, hundred to hold up a sign to get promptly yeah. escorted out of the building. 25 minutes into dynamite makes absolutely no sense. No, or even sense the guy that uh, that told uh, John Moxley at the beginning to go fuck himself or something like that. Uh, the whole the whole yes, spiel there with him at the first the first segment at AEW Dynamite. Like, it, it, oh, you know what I mean? I don't know if he, the guy's a, a millionaire or anything, but when I buy a ticket, I, I like to enjoy the tr- the show and and have a good time. I'm not gonna go there and, and start uh, saying racial slurs and and stupidities to get myself kicked out just so that my friends back home could laugh and say, Oh, look at this guy. You know, he was on TV and no, but that's not a, that's not a wrestling fan. I think we need less people like that in this world. That's what I said. I said, these are the kind of fans we need to get rid of. And then you get people like, Oh, well, there's not enough fans to get rid of. What are you talking about? They're selling out stadiums every freaking week, even though the WWE product is not what we love. It still sells out. And Gunther, I didn't mind the name, but I'm not going to lie. When somebody put the friend's apron on him, the central perk apron, and dyed his hair, yeah. hair blonde, I shared that because that was fucking hilarious. That was <laughs> fucking hilarious. I was like, you know what? It's Gunther for friends, man. I wish that somebody would have put his face on Gunther's when he was holding that ugly fucking cat. Remember that that fucking yeah. skinless cat? I wish somebody oh, would have put man. Walter's face. I got to try to work on that. I got to figure out a way to get Walter's face on. You can you can visit him anytime, Rachel. Oh fuck, that would that would have made the whole thing for me, man. That would have made the Do you whole think? Thing. Do you think that that startles the the somewhat subliminal push that they're trying to give Walter by changing his name? Because me personally, I don't think uh, he, he could be called blank. And I still would have loved Walter. And a lot of people appreciate a wrestler like Walter because he's, he comes from that old school style of wrestling, which I'm sure you like. And I, I I love that old school type of wrestling. And I think he would have made it big in the 1980s and 1990s with the likes of Bret Hart's and the Hulk Hogan's and, and all that. But to see that someone that people have to complain about a name, that guy's a great wrestler. He's a top wrestler. Just because he changed his name, the guy's garbage now. Nobody wants it's. I don't know, man. It's just it's, that's it's just the like I said, the world we live in right now. It's 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 not a happy place. <laughs> no, it isn't. And you know what? You're right. The no. name doesn't make the wrestler. I know why they did it because they probably said to him, "We want to copyright the name," and he's like, "No, Walter's my name. Walter's my brand. I built yeah. that. If I that's decide to it. go on, I want to be able to take the name with me." So they said, "Okay, well, let's give you a Gunther," and he went out yeah. there and he did it. And the fact yeah. is, at the end of the day, no matter what, the name doesn't make a wrestler. The wrestler makes the wrestler. Perfect example, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. 
took a there you bad go. gimmick, bad yeah. idea, but a great wrestler nonetheless, and he made it work. We can all we can all get the great names like Hulk Hogan or Sting or Ric Flair or Kevin Nash or Scott Hall, names that just roll off the tongue. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you get Duke the Dumpster Drossy. And you yeah. have to make it work. <laughs> exactly. And just to show, like, what I, what happened with him after, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people are, are so, like, they're, the anxiety is like, oh, I want this guy to be the champion. I want this guy to be the best. But take time. It takes time. Let the storylines progress. Let the storylines come out and enjoy it. Enjoy wrestling instead of always, like, I'm watching wrestling tonight to see what, what, what I don't like. Like, I'm, I don't watch wrestling for that. You know, like a lot of people are like that. And, and and I think it has to change. It has to change because it's sad because guys like Ricochet and Chad Gable that get bashed week in and week go, oh, these guys should be top, top guys. Calm down, calm down. It was like Dolph Ziggler back in the day. Dolph Ziggler, nobody gives a shit about Dolph Ziggler. He was in the fucking spirit squad for God's sakes. The guy was a world <laughs> champion. You know what I mean? Maybe he missed a couple opportunities that he could have won a rumble here or, you know what I mean? Or, or a title match here, but the guy had a great career, and now, now look at him. You know what I mean? Now he's 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 re wreaking the benefits of how good he was back then, and, and to what it is now. So, absolutely. Look at the name Dolph Ziggler. When you think of Dolph yeah. Ziggler, I think of one movie, Boogie Nights. Dirk Diggler. <laughs> yeah. Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> it, it's right. It's right there. And again, not to, to circle back for a second. Not to take anything away from uh, Mike Drosy because that was a yeah. he was a great wrestler. He yeah. just never got his time to shine. But I'm talking yeah. about the gimmick. Duke the dumpster yeah. drossy. Like, I'm sure that's not what he wanted, but he's like, fuck it. If it's gonna get me TV time, I'll go out there and I'll do it. And if it's gonna get me on WWE TV, which I think every wrestler's ambition, and if they even they could say, Oh, I, I don't want to be a WWE wrestler anymore. No, no. I, everybody always wanted to be a WWE wrestler, to be in the middle of the ring, you know, go on the top rope and put your hand out with the title. You know, everybody wanted to do it. Nowadays, because maybe because AEW is there, a lot of people are saying maybe the grass is a little greener on the other side, but if it came down to it, I think I'd I still I would still want to be a WWE wrestler over anything in this world. So oh 100 percent Listen, if WWE <laughs> called me tomorrow, if Tony Khan called me and Vince McMahon called yeah. me and said, We want to make you a commentator, just because of the lineage that WWE has, I yeah. would go there. I would okay. to, to call to call a to call a match. I mean, okay. I would I know you would go to AEW in a second just to say, Oh, anybody but Cody. Anybody about Cody? I don't want to see this guy. I don't want that. That's why they I wouldn't bring me on. <laughs> For sure, they wouldn't bring you on because Cody, Cody is the undersign of uh, Tony Khan when he signs the checks. But um, you know what? The grass is always greener on the other side, and yeah. I've I've said this about AEW from the beginning. You can love the product, but you don't necessarily have to love the boss. Like exactly. I, I like the I, I love the AEW product. You can clearly see behind me. I'm not a mark, but I appreciate the product. I love the talent that's there. I don't like Tony Khan. I don't think Tony Khan is a genius. I'm actually the mentality of Eric Bischoff. I just yeah. think Tony Khan it has a really big checkbook. He's got a lot of power. And he's also got, and when I say power, not power as in power, I mean star power. Yeah. Like he took, he took arguably the best indie guys in the game, the best overseas talents, and he brought them here. He made them regular weekly television. Because exactly. we didn't get to see Kenny Omega every week. We didn't get no, to see. We didn't get to see Young, Young Bucks either. And yeah. Exactly. So he 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 gave us that, and I'll appreciate him for that. But I always I don't think, think his booking decisions are right. I uh, I don't think the I think the Hangman Page storyline took a little bit longer than it needed to. But I enjoyed the payoff. I wasn't yeah. a big fan of the whole drinking thing because I was there's a lot of people that that suffer with alcohol. I don't think we should try to highlight that. But I that's I, that's why I think they stopped doing that as well. Eh, with the whole John Moxley thing as well, and a lot of people are going through that. It's tough times and everything, especially now during COVID. But I think that's why they they stopped that uh, little gimmick there. And uh, good for them. At least they they recognized it to at least stop they, it. They and recognized you know? it and they they yeah. changed it. They changed yeah. it right away, which is something yeah. that WWE fails to do. WWE seems to kind of keep pounding stuff down our throats until yeah. we fall in love with it. But what I will say is that WWE has a roundabout way of tying a nice little bow on certain storylines. Like when I look at Liv Morgan, a lot of people were upset that she got the title shot at day one. And yeah. then she did. It was a great match. Actually, it was a really great, great match. match. Made me a fan. Made me a fan. Yeah. I did not expect her to have that kind of, of storytelling ability in her, but she did. And she won me over. And then mm. people were like, oh, man, I can't believe they didn't put it on her. Like you said, Frank, you just gotta wait. You gotta purchase. Exactly. Now, be patient. Frank, you know when it comes to you know when it comes to Royal Rumble predictions. I'm pretty yeah, damn on my Royal Rumble. I know, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I, I think it was last year where I where I actually thought Kevin Owens was gonna pull it off. I actually thought he was gonna pull it off. 
did it. <laughs> I know. Talk about I know this, shit. I, I know this episode. I know this episode is going to be airing after the Royal Rumble. But if you want to give your predictions for the Royal Rumble, just to see if they're going to be good, the floor is yours, my friend. All right, let's do it. So here's what I think for the w- Women's Royal Rumble. I think the Women's Royal Rumble is going to end with these four ladies: Lita, Charlotte Flair, Mickey James, and Liv Morgan. Now, the reason why I say these four is because you're not going to bring over a champion from another company and have her be an early elimination. It doesn't no, make I, sense. I, you know what? As as the owner of the Impact Wrestling, I don't think that that would have been in, in the cards. You know what I mean? Like, you're not, you're, I'm not sending her for you to embarrass her and embarrass my company, right? So I, exactly. I, I get that. So I get that. I think she's going to make it to the final four. I think she will be promptly eliminated by Charlotte Flair and Lita at the same time. She can hold her head high that it took two ladies to get her out of the ring. That's and then at that point, point, Charlotte Flair and Lita will start smack-talking each other. A couple of forearm shots back and forth. Liv Morgan will get involved. They'll beat her into a corner, a little back and forth. And then I think Lita will throw Charlotte Flair over, therefore setting up Lita and Charlotte Flair. And at that point, when Lita's gloating, laughing, Liv Morgan will come in, boom, throw her over for the win. Liv Morgan gets a straight shot to Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Charlotte Flair versus Lita sets up that at WrestleMania. Yeah. And then that's how I think things are going to turn out. Now, for the men's, I this may surprise a lot of people, but these are the final fours that I came down to. I came down to, again, Kevin Owens. Uh, again, Austin Theory. Big E. And Sheamus. And people are like, well, people, I, even my when I did my pred- prediction show, I had my former co-host, Michelle, who was another one of these straight talk OGs. She was like, why would you pick Sheamus? I'm like, because Sheamus is a guy. That had three solid title reigns. One, yeah. Two as a heel, one as a face, and he's delivered on every punch. He had great matches. He's a great talent, and I think he's for another serious contendership. Just not. That's yet. what it looks like, right? That's what. That's how they're playing him out right now, right? Like they're playing him strong. They're really playing Absolutely. him out strong, and and that that's very that's wow. I, I like that. I really like that. Exactly. And, and so and, who, and, who do you think that. who do you think would win out of those four? Well, who's had the most camera time with Vince McMahon lately? Usually Austin when you have Curry. camera time, yeah. Usually when you have camera time with a McMahon, it means something. It means yeah. you're kind they of wouldn't, they wouldn't put you in a, in a segment with Vince McMahon for nothing, right? They wouldn't waste exactly. this time. No, they wouldn't waste That's, this. So if yeah. you could go toe to toe with Vince McMahon, there's a good chance that you're going to either end up in the main show or you're going to be one of the final two, and then you're going to come yeah. back and win it next year. Depending I could see, I could see him being the final two, maybe not winning it. Personally, I would love Kevin Owens to win it. But we'll see. So what we'll I. See. So your what winner, I. your winner is your winner is my winner is. I'm actually going my my head. My head says Sheamus. My heart says Kevin Owens. But I want to say it's either going to be Kevin Owens or Austin Theory is the final two, and Kevin Owens might pull it out and finally get that Royal Rumble win, or Sheamus throws out Austin Fury and he gets a straight shot at WrestleMania because I honestly think Sheamus versus Brock Lesnar is just as exciting. As Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley, and, and Sheamus I only could, could run a promo too, Bobby. as well, eh? Dude, listen, I'm not gonna lie. Brock Lesnar, Mountain Man. I didn't know he had that much teeth. Frank, I had <laughs> no crazy. idea. <laughs> it is. It's a but. Brock Lesnar on the mic is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, he is. It brings me he's, brings he's us back to when he was. Remember when he was a little bit more entertaining in those SmackDown days back in, by a couple of years ago. Well, not a couple of years ago. Like let's say like ten years ago, like the Eddie Guerrero era and that. He was always on the mic. He was always talking. He was always screwing around, entertaining everybody, you know? And then he got to go with Paul Heyman that if anyone would want to be with somebody as a manager, I think Paul Heyman would be my pick in 2022. That's for sure. So he didn't ever even have to talk. So now that he's getting the chance to uh, to unwind and show his, his true colors now, I'm liking it. I'm loving it every second of it. Absolutely. I think it's great. I think it's entertaining. But, I mean, there's there's only one other way that this could work. If Bobby Lashley ends up beating Brock Lesnar because Paul Heyman screws him, which may happen, then that would set up, again, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. And that would be great. But there's also whispers of The Rock. Now, picture this. If, I mean, if Roman Reigns gets past Seth Rollins, which I'm 95% sure he will, wouldn't it be glorious to come out on the next SmackDown to be like, I'm the head of the table? beating everybody acknowledge me yada 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 but that's that's and all what of a sudden, i think that's what i think with the that, rockets that, that story is it, the only end game for that story with roman reigns the head of the table and, and I, nobody could touch me i'm 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 god now 
is 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 the rock there is nobody else that that could lit especially if he beats seth rollins now i don't think there's anybody else and i think they have to throw the brinks truck at the rock just to get him there and uh i think it'll be an intriguing storyline especially with the rock maybe not being there uh, as often you know like the like the story that they had with john cena and that they were always going back and forth on social media nowadays you could have a storyline going on on social media or you don't have to show yourself on tv these days so i could see that happening absolutely absolutely so you, you actually okay. think you, you so you think that bobby lashley is going to beat brock lesnar at the Royal Rumble? I I I I want to say I'm conflicted by it, but I want to say he will because I think Paul Heyman is still aligned himself with Roman Reigns. Okay. So I think this is all the ploy to screw Brock Lesnar out of the title. But if Brock ends up winning that match, then that means whoever wins the Rumble goes at Brock Lesnar, and that leaves Roman Reigns open for the Rock. Now, if if Brock Lesnar loses the title, then we know Brock is not coming to WrestleMania. I will okay. guarantee you that. But if you Brock think if Brock Lesnar, you retain. think sorry, if, if you think if Brock Lesnar loses, he's gonna throw himself into the Royal Rumble, and maybe like Roman Reigns, if 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 that happens to him, let's say both champions lose, you think one of them will will throw themselves into the Royal Rumble? Oh, of course, you have to have one of them in the main event. They have to, one of them has to be in the main event, any way, shape, or form. And if they end up getting screwed at the Rumble, they still have elimination chamber to kind of punch their ticket. But it, they have to be cautious on how they play this. The one exciting thing right now is is that somehow. They fired all the bad writers who don't know anything about wrestling. And they've actually kept some people who actually seem to know how to build yeah. a great storyline. And now it's exciting to say I am now fully reinvested in WWE. Also because it's my fa it's our favorite time as wrestling fans yes. of the year. Royal yes. Rumble, the WrestleMania, yes. those are the best four months of wrestling. You don't yes. get any better four months than that. No. So no. it'll it'll be an exciting time, but, but also I'm excited for the fact that my boy John Moxie's back, man. I thought it was a heartfelt speech. Yeah, I loved every minute of it. Bully Ray could suck the fattest part of my ass because there's no <laughs> way in hell John Moxie didn't need to apologize for shit. No, and I don't give no. a shit. He stepped no. away to get healthy for, for his wife and his daughter. Yeah, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And any exactly. true fan will understand. I want a hundred percent John Moxley, not a yeah. seventy-five or a fifty. I want 100% because I know that man's got somebody he's fighting for every day, and that's his wife and his daughter. I've had that's my very demons. Well said. I've had very my well demons. Said. I, not with drugs or alcohol, but I've had my demons with my own head. I'm an overthinker. I uh, I suffered through a, a rough patch of depression this past December, but it was my wife and my daughters and great friends like my co-host from MLW and the support system that I had that pulled me out of it. And uh, without them, I wouldn't be where I am right now. Four weeks later, I'm a completely different person. And it's, it's great it's to hear. Credit. It's a credit to the people that are around me. And, and I even said this in one of my MLWs, you know, and then 2022 is a year of change. And I, I'm not going to worry about you love me. You hate me. You, you think my interviews, my conversations are a joke. You think they're stupid. I only get 30 views, whatever. The fact is, is I'm still getting views. And if somebody's willing to take time out of their day to watch what I'm doing, Exactly. So, exactly. 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 Me, but the old George that started this show four years ago, five years ago, he's back. He's not back as angry as he was before. <laughs> he's smart, and he's tactful and he's found a new lease on life. And that's the most important thing. That's great to hear, George. I, I'm really happy to hear that. And uh, another thing that I wanted to go back on was another great moment that uh, you were witness to see is when Speedball Mike Bailey signed this impact contract on the back of Josh Alexander in the ring with Scott Damore giving him the the uh the contract what the hell was going on there man how did, did you did you have any speculation did you see Scott Damore there that that day what 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 was going through your head when everything culminated in the ring right in front of you so usually when you reappear on destiny as frequent as speedball did over this last year um he appeared at the summer show we had august 2020 and then he reappeared multiple times this year usually when you see a guy coming all that time destiny is um they have a lot of ties to impact wrestling josh alexander got signed at a destiny show uh same thing with speedball mike bailey if you are a reoccurring member of that roster you're basically in line to be you're being polished at that point you're being polished you're being worked you're being monitored, you're being scrutinized, yeah. all because of Scott Demore's ties with Destiny Wrestling okay. and his friendship with George and, and Ray and Santino Morella and all that stuff. So when you're there, as often as you are, you're being polished. And um, Speedball already was fantastic, 
but he was just, he had to be watched where, uh, uh, on a small event where Scott could really look at him and see to all. Get, yeah, to appreciate him. Exactly. To see that he checks all the boxes yeah. like all of us Canadian fans already know. Yeah. And um, so the, the stipulation on that match was that if, if Speedball won, he would gain a contract. And okay, so that, that you you th- that was the whole thing, like you knew that was that was the build up for the whole match at the beginning. Wow, of the show, they announced that <laughs> if Speedball beat Josh, it was going to be no title changes would happen. But if Speedball beat Josh on that night, he would get a contract wow. signed. But then hold on, they made all of our hearts pop out of our chest because he lost. Oh my god, he lost that match, and the whole crowd was like, We were happy oh, that no. Josh won, of course, but yeah. we were like, No, no, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> out strolls uh, Josh cuts a promo, like an amazing promo because Josh is fire on the mic. Speedball and Josh have that like show of respect in the ring. And all of a sudden, Scott Demore walks through the ropes. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> right, uh, right away, eh? Like yeah. just typical, typical, you know, I, I'm a podcaster. Yeah. Phone was in my hand. Yeah. Before Scott was ready to go. <laughs> yeah. so, boom. Sure enough, Scott starts going into Scott Demore speak. And he's like, you got to show them how fucking great Canadian wrestlers sign, sign on the dotted line. And all of a sudden, Josh leans over and fucking speak. I fucking lost I it. I can't believe when I saw that video, I freaked out. I'm like, how did this all come apart? And <laughs> Josh, Alex- imagine, of all wrestlers, Josh Alexander <laughs> bending down so that Speedball McMillie could sign the contract on his back that he got from Scott Demore. That's right. That, that you, you can't, how do you, you can't fuck, you can't plan that. How do you? Oh my god, man! That's straight out of like a Walt Disney movie, like like it's right at the end, like. Dude, oh all you need god. is Emilio Estevez by the curtain giving you the slow nod. Oh my! And then god. you're like, yes, yes, unbelievable, man! It's great to see. Like I, I I've seen him a couple. Of, well, I, I've seen him a, a couple of times in Montreal when when we uh, had everything open over here, and the crowd goes ballistic for Speedball Mike Bailey, and and, and and it's for sure that the guy is gonna is a future champion in Impact Wrestling. That's a guarantee. But it's great to see Canadians getting that chance to go on this big stage and show how great Canadian wrestlers are. Absolutely. And Impact, if you think about it, Impact is Canada's promotion. It's I, our yeah. promotion because yeah. of all the great Canadian talent that they have and the fact that they have one of the hardest working rosters. And, you know, like when you talk about the Forbidden Door, I, I mean, I could go on and on about how Impact didn't get their fair shake. Now, if yeah. you look at if you look at pay-per-view sales and you look at, TV numbers, uh, AEW did its part. It helped yeah. generate those numbers. And yeah. yes, hun- money was made. I'm not disputing that. My only beef with the Forbidden Door when it first opened was that we were seeing Kenny Omega all the time. Yeah, We were seeing the Good Brothers going there all the time. And I'm a huge Good Brothers fan. You know that. Yeah. I love the Good yeah. Brothers. Yeah. We were seeing Matt Hardy come over for one episode. We saw Private Party come over yeah. for one episode. We saw Finn Juice make a couple of appearances at Impact. We saw Sammy Callahan go over to, to AEW once. Yeah. How many, anybody else get a shot to go over? The door didn't open both ways. No, it That's was just my, open one way. That was way. my opinion. That was my my opinion on that. The door didn't open both ways. And the fact is, um, when you when you mention a forbidden door, usually doors open and close. Yeah. They swing both <laughs> ways or they at least open and you can yeah. walk through either side. Yeah. But AEW didn't allow Impact to walk over there too often. Yeah, and that was my only drawback. I mean, if you're going to share talent, that's fine. But what infuriated me is seeing Tony Khan's face on every AEW episode or every W. Uh, it, 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 looked, it looked like the, it was like kind of like a taking advantage of the situation, right? Because they really knew that didn't have that that great rating and you know that fanfare that AEW had, and and it, it, it they should have. I think they should have did a little bit more for Impact, if, to tell you the truth. I felt that one side got there got more exposure on another company's product then it was shared and that was my only real beef and that's why i think that mickey james going over to wwe is a great olive branch after how she was disrespected yeah but i i i definitely don't see her being eliminated any shorter than the final four because anything less than that would be a slap in the face my only question is and i gotta pose a question to you do you sure. think she comes out with the impact knockouts championship around her waist a hundred percent a hundred percent hundred percent she has to she has to, then it, it defeats the purpose, right? I think because you're trying, you're trying to. Because I, I, I remember, if I'm not mistaken, they they publicized the uh, her being in the Rumble the Friday night, and I think they had the Impact pay per view that Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. They did. So it it kind of helped people want to watch Impact, which was, I think that was the whole 
the whole thing behind it because it's it's like it's like me saying you know what george i'm gonna help you uh promote uh, you, you have to help me promote my show but i'm not gonna help you promote so like why would i do it then you know what i mean 100%. i'm sure there has to be some kind of understanding that hey we're, we're both trying to it's not it's not all about wwe here you know what i mean so i'm sure it, it and i'm sure it did help um impact a bit and especially putting mickey james and diana perrazzo in the main event i think that was one of the the the, the hints to say that it did help the exposure for uh, impact uh, as well so it's but it's great to see that because i think we need a little bit more of that this forbidden door and 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 you know what? I, I I see it in this way too. It's like WWE saying, you know what? If we we really wanted to do it, we could do it. It we don't. It doesn't have to be because AEW is doing it. We have to do it, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. WWE could do it in a second. They mm -hmm. just have to. Vince McMahon just says, okay, go get this guy, go get that guy, go get that guy. I'm sure they'll come back. I'm sure oh, they'll come back. A hundred percent. If who would, I, you, who would you like to see come through that forbidden door from from let's say AEW or Impact? To WWE because I there's there's so many people but I'm I, I I have a couple but I'll let you go first. Well, definitely from AEW, it's got to be Cody Rhodes. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say it. And as much as I hate him, I think I would love to see that happen. I would love to see that. Happen. I, I actually would too. Yeah. But I think from Impact, I'd love to see Josh walk through. Oh, I'd also wow. like to see Moose walk through, yeah. if possible. Um, also just because she is one of the hottest indie talents and. They impact stole her from the world of Masha Slamovich. I'd love to see her. Oh, walk. yeah. I don't think she will. But I also know that Roxy right now, since losing the ROH title, she's kind of in limbo. So I wouldn't mind seeing Roxy walk through the forbidden door. That's I also a, that's a past guest of yours too, as well, right? Yes, Roxy. Yeah. She was she's fantastic. Yeah. She's such a sweetheart, but she's so talented. But you think you think about the rock, the Roxy thing. I was what I was thinking is that. Going into that match with Diana Perrazzo, because she was the Ring of Honor champion, right? Mm -hmm. So to me and everyone, there was all of those rumors saying that and she had the trial with WWE and everyone said it went well, but there's no um, official announcement that she signed with WWE. But usually what happens to my to what I think is that every time someone is a champion in a, in a federation and they kind of know they're leaving to WWE because obviously you can't be the Ring of Honor champion in WWE, mm -hmm. they... Mm -hmm give up the title, they lose, they go out the right way, and then you see them on TV in a couple of weeks or a month from now, right? So mm -hmm. do you think Rox uh, could maybe potentially be in the Royal Rumble this weekend? Uh, she was one of my predictions. She was one of my predictions to be there. And But think about it from ROH's perspective, too. Roxy was a great, great yeah. champion. She had a great run. She held that division together, especially yeah. on the way out. But if you're going to come back in April, who better to represent your your startup women's champion other than Deanna Barraza? Oh, yeah. Seriously. Time. Who Good had time. a better 2020 and 2021 than that young lady? Good for her. That lady, yeah. other than Britt Baker, those two ladies had a year in wrestling that, that people dream about having. Like, there's no two better women on the planet yeah. than those two ladies right there. So, that's for sure. I also think I'm, I'm going to throw this out right there. I know he's a former guest of mine and yours. But we all know... That there's a certain young lady who uh, shares the last name Corelli, Ooh. and she's been spending a lot of time stateside. She's been spending a really? lot. Really, true. Hey, I've known you. Oh, you're right. Hey, wow. Hey, so I'm too. thinking that we're gonna see Bianca Corelli make a debut in the Royal Rumble, wow, and then we'll see her on amazing. NXT a few nights later. But I, I firmly believe that Bianca Corelli has been signed to the WWE. I don't know anything officially. But the fact that she's literally out in Florida every day between those photo shoots that she's doing, always working out in the gym, and all that amazing food. This girl cooks some of the most amazing food I've ever seen in my life, but yet she is like rock solid. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and she's a sweetheart too, but it's, it's like, it's ridiculous. And the food she cooks is so fucking good, and I, I hate every second of it. I'm like, yeah. fuck. I look at that, I gain fucking 40 pounds. <laughs> He eats it, and it's like it just it, it just fills in the like the whole gap. The biceps like up here now. You know what I mean? You're getting me hungry now, man. You're getting. Me I'm hungry, telling you, bro. Man. But Bianca Corelli is. Uh, I'm firmly believe that uh, we're gonna see. I just don't know how they're gonna work out her character because there's already a Bianca Belair. There can't be a Bianca two Biancas. It just wouldn't work. But I will think she's going to don the Morella last name. I just don't know what her first name is going to be. But you know, it's going to be like super Italian. Like it's gonna be like, uh, like uh, I don't know, like Alessandra, 
uh, Marelli. Something Italian, right? To get that. Because, uh, we, you know what? That's another thing, too. Like, the, the Tony D. I'm really liking the Tony D. Because, I don't know, because maybe he's Italian and that. But I love that wrestler. I, I actually. I, yeah. He's one it of caught the- my eye. It caught my eye. Maybe because as I'm a Sicilian Italian, you know, but it caught my eye. But to, just to see that, just to get that, that Italian gimmick back on TV again. It's great to see, and, and, he, and he is a great wrestler as well. Probably a future champion as well in NXT. So, hundred percent, man. Listen, you know what they got to bring back, Frank? You remember FBI? They got to bring back the full oh, blooded yeah. Italians, man. They got to bring back the <laughs> FBI, bro. <laughs> they were so good. I know that Vito's not doing nothing. Bring back Vito for one night only. Give me Big Vito. I no dress though. No dress. I don't need a dress. Just give me Vito. One. That's all I need is Vito, bro. That's it. Oh man, and the MLW uh, for, forefront. How was that going with you there, with the uh, with your buddy? Uh, rewind, yeah. MLW yeah. Rewind is uh, kicking ass and taking names. We're having so much fun doing that. Uh, we are actually uh, semi affiliated with them now, um, where we we're dealing with the press stuff and and trying to get our passports aligned so we can actually go over there and actually tour in some MLW stuff and actually like dope uh, like check out the roster, check out like an actual MLW show. Um, and I can't wait, but I, I think everything MLW is doing, uh, is great. There there's peaks and valleys with MLW. Yeah, like of course, they have of a course, really bad, everything. they have a really bad week and then they come back and they light it up. The Azteca stuff's been fun. The storylines that they're building, but right now they're, they're kind of turning this authority storyline. You got hammer and you got Richard holiday fighting, you know, Cesar Durant. They're fighting the power. They're fighting, they're fighting the that. The beef. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I just love everything they're doing. And I, I, the fact that we've been able to have so many members of that talented roster on our show, the fact that they've been able, they've given us the time from Alicia Altoot multiple times to everyone. I just, all I, I just want to, I just want to have 30 minutes with hammer. That's all I'm asking. So hammer, I don't know if you watch Joe, I, I'm sure you do, but if you are your boy hammer, just give us a little bit of time, man. Richard's given us time like three times. Just give I us know. a bit of time. Come on, Hammerstone. Come, Come on, on man. <laughs> Help us out. But Rewind has been great. And it's a it's a product that I that I thoroughly enjoy because it has that that feel of something special, but that it's it, it is getting more mainstream. Yeah. Uh just the only the only shitty thing is is that the lawsuit that's happening right now, you hate to see two companies going out. But if, if WWE did do that and they did stonewall the vice that's TV kind of a deal. dick move yeah that's a that's a huge dick move yeah, yeah. and there's no and only to do that because court bauer was affiliated with them once upon a time that's it eh? that's it's that's just that's... to uh, just to rub salt in the wound kind of exactly. thing you know it's exactly it's sad exactly. to see but i don't know i hope i hope everything comes out good for for both both organizations out of that lawsuit there but uh george uh we're gonna have to uh, cut it cut it loose here but uh the, let, let me tell you, this won't be the last time that uh, you and me will be on the same screen if it's on your show or on my show. But I, I'm really happy to have done this and get to our fans to get to know who you are and who what your channel is all about. For everyone that isn't following you on social media and YouTube, tell them where they could find you. So social media is pretty much straightforward. Straight Talk Wrestling on Facebook, on Instagram and on YouTube. Straight Talk Wrestling. Hit that subscribe button. We're, at this point in time, we're like three away from 450. Love to hit that before the end of January. I think we can get three more subscribers. But if you're watching this after January, please subscribe anyways, because we appreciate everyone that gives us the time. And on Twitter, it's at underscore straight talk. I don't know why. When I built the handle, for some reason, I left out the, the wrestling. I should have yeah. tried to keep everything uniform, but I fucked it up. It is what it is. I it is what... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I see. I Sometimes I see commercials of straight talk there with the phone there. And I'm like, fucking George has got his own commercial. God damn it. I know. <laughs> hey, when, I, when I interviewed Austin, when I interviewed uh, uh, Ace Austin, he was like, did you say straight talk wrestling? I'm like, yeah. He's like, that's the name of my phone company, straight talk. I'm like, great. That's awesome. Now if they that's fucking amazing. see this, they're going to fucking sue my ass and think I took their fucking great. Thanks a lot, Ace. Thanks a lot, bud. Just ruined everything. Oh, my God. So for everybody out there, come support George and his journey, the mini host as well, and follow them on all social media platforms and on YouTube. Support them. Hit that subscribe button. Leave them a little comment so that they know you're there. George, thank you very much for coming on. And this will not be the last time. We'll we'll set up another another interview for sure. If it's going to be on my channel, if it's going to be on yours, whatever the case may be, this was a lot of fun, man. And I'm glad everyone gets to know who George McKay is from Straight Talk Wrestling. Well, Frank, I appreciate it. It's an honor to be on your show. And definitely the next time we're going to get it up before you hit that boat, we got to get it up on Straight Talk because we did try to set it up for a while. But and, 
schedules. And, and you know what? And I got to say, too, I uh, I better get the five questions, too, from the mini holes, too. Yes, <laughs> you will. I promise you, you will get the five questions. For everyone right. gets the five questions. Don't worry. Everyone gets the five questions. But it's, an honor to be on. it's an honor to be on Go Full in the Ring. I appreciate you guys. You guys were down with me since day one. And that meant the world. The support was everything. And uh, Joe Full in the Ring is is hands down one of the best. Is is the best podcast in Canada. I so if you're not that. watching them, you're fucking stupid. I appreciate that. George. Except the hermaphrodite, Mister Potato Head. You know, we leave Kyle out of there. So, Kyle, I love you, bro. I do. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, man. And everybody out there, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And remember, wrestling is life. So, Joe Fo. I'm a gargle a shot for Kurt hitting it, everybody, before we go. Oh, no. Joe Fo, thank you, guys. <laughs>